know where to start really. The people that uh, here apply, there's a lot of people that know me here, and uh, a lot of people that love me, and a lot of people that I love in return. Uh, that you know what's been happening in my life, and that uh, you understand, and that uh, you don't think badly of me, and, uh, and when things do go wrong, you don't take advantage, and you don't laugh, and <laughs> just make things really intolerable for me. Uh, as you know, my Aunt Mona has been in hospital for some years now, in a coma. And I thank you for the cards that you send, and the messages, and the greetings. Um, and uh, one day a week on a Sunday, I go to the hospital to keep my Uncle Tony company, who's there 24-7 looking after my Aunt Mona. He won't leave the bedside. Um, because he always says, you know, I don't want to lose him. I just don't want to lose her, right? While she's still, whilst there's still a chance, then she's still within my grasp. And I got there last Sunday, and uh, the nurse, very kind, very understanding, very caring. Uh, she just gave us a few minutes alone, me, Uncle Tony, and Mona, left us alone with the machinery and uh, our aspirations. Um, and within about one minute of her leaving the room, all the machinery went haywire. And, uh, and she was flatlining, and uh, Uncle Tony was going crazy, and he was just dancing around saying, I don't want to lose her, I don't want to lose her. Whatever, I just don't know what I'd do. And, uh, and she didn't look too good in the bed. And, uh, Tony just couldn't go near her, and I, I went up to the bed, and on the bedside table next to her, I saw a little teddy bear. Uh, there was a letter from the president wishing him well. There were flowers, of course, and uh, the remains of the last cup of coffee she tried to drink, and a mirror that she, uh, that she loved, that she always kept in her, her purse. And I walked over to Aunt Mona, and I picked the little mirror up from the bedside table, as one would uh, in the absence of a medical professional. And I held down the mirror under her nose just to check it out. She was really. And her arm flew up from under the bed sheets. But it had a, like a lipstick on it in her hand, and she started applying the lipstick in the mirror and laughing. <laughs> and uh, I just thought, you know, I just really fucking hate it when you're supposed to be looking after someone and they just start fucking around. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it more now. Uh, well, what can I say? I, I, I'm still living in the frozen fruit container on the North Circular Road. Uh, with my father, who uh, now believes he's an Eskimo. <laughs> and he fishes through a hole in the floor to the car park below. <laughs> and all our food is from Findus. Yeah. And we eat it straight from the freezer. Because that's what you do when you're an Eskimo, apparently. And I... I uh, I, I don't really like living there, but I'm doing it for my dad. And we're on the we're on the route uh, for on a Sunday for the religious maniacs to come around. You know, the Bible bashers to come around and knock on your door and try to sell you Jesus badly. They can't back up their assertions. So I, I say prove it, and they say yeah, it's all in the book. No. It's all in the book. You just have to read the book, and it's all there. And I just say, get out of my house and please don't come back. And there'll be trouble if you do come back. If I'm here next Sunday and you knock on the door, there'll be trouble. Now, a few weeks ago, I made a big mistake. I, uh, I made a joke about Chris Hoon, uh, the, uh, the disgraced, imprisoned, uh, now released, of course, uh, 
liberal Democrat energy minister who's now, he, he's a journalist or an advisor on energy matters. Uh, but I made a mistake and I made a joke about Chris Hoon. And I basically said, oh yeah, oh, well Chris Hoon, oh yeah, he's had a heart attack. Um, and he needed a bypass and he got his grandmother to go to the hospital and have it done. Uh, instead of him. Uh, <laughs> It's not, it's not a great job. <laughs> but he took exception to it, and he came round to our house, our trailer, and they, he just said, I didn't like the joke. I, I don't think it was appropriate. I think I've, I've been incarcerated for just so long, and um, I want to put it behind me. And when you start saying crap like that, well, then it's going gonna, it's gonna to be in the back of my mind. and It's going to make me feel... Well, maybe the, the uh, you're going to have the public perception as, as being ne negative against me, and uh, I don't think it's fair. So, uh, you can have your fucking penguin back. <laughs> uh, and he left, and, and I took the penguin, and uh, I didn't really know what to do with it. And I, I asked Dad, and he said, give it a fish. Uh, <laughs> And I just tried to make the penguin at home. I don't know what you do when uh, when this sort of event happens. And, uh, but I, I tried to make the penguin comfortable. And uh, uh, Tara, she's called. <laughs> it wasn't anything that I, I wasn't looking for anything. No way. No way was I looking for love or <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it was. It, it turned joyful. Things took off. Uh, when you get past, uh, you know, the feathers on the head, and the, <laughs> the beak, and the, yeah. There's that warm. Uh, Part between just underneath uh, where their feet, when they stand together, there's a warm part where they um, incubate their eggs, and it is very warm. And uh, you get any part of your body near that, and then then you're you're just gonna be putting in their hands. <laughs> Very soon she took to climbing into my bed at night, and very soon I stopped kicking her out. And we started to cuddle on a regular basis. And I thought she'd be cold, but she was warm, and she whispered to me a lot. And we embarked on probably the most beautiful sexual relationship I've ever had. And one Sunday morning, where we'd given ourselves time, we'd been out on the Saturday, I remember we had a few drinks. <laughs> on the Sunday morning, it's a beautiful memory, we just made the time for ourselves, we stayed in bed, you know, my dad usually has his breakfast uh, brought up uh, on a Sunday, but we said we were not going to do it that Sunday, so we had to fend for himself with a fishing pole. And, <laughs> and I was inside Tara, I mean, oh, it was the most succulent experience I'd ever had. And when a penguin, during a, a sexual intercourse, locks onto you, you know you're locked on. <laughs> <laughs> and on a Sunday morning, and we were late, maybe two hours into a four-hour planned shift, and there was a banging on the door, and I thought, wow. It's going to be the Bible bashers, the fucking bastards. They're coming. <laughs> I told them that I, I would kill them when, when they came around. And so I thought, Tara, let's go fucking sorry for that. So I got up. Tara's still on me. I'm still inside her. And I took her to the door. And we're going to show these fucking bastards that what real people do. They don't look at the, the Bible. They enjoy each other uh, in a meaningful, real way. And I, 
I'm, I'm so resentful about this with uh, the people that want to just force their opinion on you. So I took to her to the door. I opened the door, and, she, and I was going to show those fucking Bible bashing bastards that you know this is real life. This is real life. And I opened the door, and it's like uh, officers from the RSPB <laughs> and police officers who. Um, you know, the, the RSPB are, are looking shocked and saying, yes, that's him. And the, the police, there are guys, two guys in uniform, and I can see that, you know, they're, they're looking at me, and I, I can see that they're are becoming aroused, and they're thinking, I'll have, I'll have some of that. If I can arrest the guy, then, you know, we're going to get some of that. Um, jealousy, and jealous, just jealousy. Um, but we had a conference on the door. Uh, I wouldn't let them in. You don't ever let them in because you, you say, "Am I? Am I? Um, what's the word you use? Um, is it a bigger tree that I let you into my house?" And they say, uh, "No." Is it a bigger tree that I give you my name? No, it's not. Her name. I can give you her name. Her name is Tom. She, she can't make the decision for herself to tell you. I'll give you her name. But basically, the RSPB at the doorstep, they said that. They weren't going to take the man any further. That if it was part of a loving relationship, then they were not going to interfere in, in the course of love. So we went back and we cooked the uh, Sunday rolls for my dad, um, which we never have. It was a, a more by way of a celebration. Um, but from that moment on, uh, things soured. Uh, I had betrayed, I, I feel, I feel that Tara felt that I had betrayed her by taking her to the door and um, having everyone sort of eyeballing her and uh, she just was uh, very uh, distant after that. I, I found her distant and uh, she really let me know in, 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 in no uncertain terms that uh, I'd, I'd, crossed, uh, I'd crossed some divide. Uh, by showing him to the street and the neighbors, uh, all in the windows opposite. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it wasn't so good. And we, 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 we split up, and she disappeared down the hall. <laughs> and I think she's still there, but her choice is that she's going to just be in an environment where she belongs, swimming around and in the, on the car park underneath the, the tree. <laughs> And I call to her sometimes and say, hey, you know, Tara, let's just talk it over, for God's sake. For God's sake, I was doing it for you anyway. The Bible bashers, the fucking bastards. I was doing it for you. And I could hear her swimming, and I could hear her chuckling to herself. But she wouldn't respond to me, and she wouldn't reply, and I had to move on. And you maybe, you know that I, I don't have very much luck with them with um, relationships and women. And, uh, so you'll be surprised to learn that um, I'm not only in another relationship now, I'm in a relationship with a woman who will not leave me alone. She, if I ask for space, she will intrude on that space. And it's pretty damn, it makes a change, basically, to have a woman. Uh, chasing around after me instead of me making all the fucking running and embarrassing myself and humiliating myself and shaming shaming everything I believe in and everything I stand for instead I have her my back and call, I have her phone to me 24-7 I got my phone on vibrate the whole time and she's ringing and ringing and ringing, I, I don't answer I won't answer and I I've just made a pact with myself that tonight, the next time she rings, I'm going to answer it, and you can hear the, the shit that I have to deal with, and uh, and you can see how much of a, um, a man that I've become, you know, because you, you know me as like a Mr. Mr. Emasculated that's chasing after women and are not interested, and, and they just treat me like an asshole, and tonight, the next time the phone rings, I'm going to share it with you, and, uh, and you can see. And on cue, on cue, I have a phone call, and it's in, on my brain. Yep, that's, that's, that's the one. Yeah, hi. Yeah. Yeah, well, well you, I, I said I was working. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't want you to come. No, no, no. I said I was working, so when I work, I, I don't want you to come. I just want you to stay where you are. <laughs> well, you can read a book. <laughs> read a book. <laughs> yeah, I know you don't. You don't. <laughs> I was just suggesting that you might want to start, and you, you won't have to phone me so much if you have to get some interest or watch TV or, or something. Yeah, well, later, yeah. You, well, no, I don't want, I'm not going to tell you where, because I don't want you to come. I told you I don't want you to come, I, well, I'm working, and, and it's not right, and it's not good for me, and uh, I, don't, I don't really want you to meet people, because I'm not ready for that yet. No. No, 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 don't do that. Yeah, no, don't do that, no. No. No, I say, I'm, I'm telling you now, no. No. No, listen. Mom, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> fucking, let's fucking talk about this later. <laughs> No. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I, I think I better go. Home. I'll, yeah, I'll see you then. <laughs>